So the first thing that you want to do is actually to clean up the area where you're going to be quilting your large quilt. So I have a setup right here in my sewing room where I have two tables against each other and that leaves me a lot of space behind the sewing machine for me to put my quilts and to hold the quilts while I'm actually quilting it. So I want all the weight of the quilt on, on top of the table and the one in front of me is going to be in front of me. So as you can see here, I've already prepped my sewing machine. I've already got the Supreme slider on, I have my glove on and I've made some bobbins and now I'm just ready to quilt. So what I'm going to do is actually pull all of this large pieces and make sure that it's kind of like not weighing down and it's easy to move around because I want all of that bunched up in like a hill, like a big hill so that it's actually going to be easily for me to move. So as you can see here, I'm starting from the center, exactly in the center, of course, this is a medallion quilt, I know where the center is, but if I'm doing something like um, that I don't know, I will actually find a center and mark it with a pin or something so that I can actually come to it when I'm at the machine. So I know here for the center because it's a medallion quilt and basically what I have now is the biggest point of that um, at the throat I like to start from the center because this is where I find that I have the most difficult part you have a lot under your throat and a lot in front of you so that's the the most that you can have for this quilt particular quilt and if you have a smaller throat you will pr probably find that this will actually fit alongside um, closer to your needle but it's okay because we are going to focus on the center part you just want to make sure that the center part is clear enough for you to actually get working as you can see here if I'm working on that orange um, bird right there I know that bird is already flat enough if I'm working on the blue bird right there I want to make sure that all of that area is actually flat um, so that I can move around so it depends on how you like to move I like to actually push my quilt away or sometimes I pull uh, towards me but anyway I will actually work vertically towards me so the machine is not um, I don't need to move the quilt right to right or left so that's how I like to work so this is an example of me going to be about quilting this first part so I'm just going to focus on just one simple part even though it's a large quilt I want to make sure that you know that even though you're la quilting a large quilt you're just focusing on one single area at a time so you don't have to be overwhelmed just focus on that area and get that area flattened enough so that you can work with that area so as you can see right here I'm doing it very slow just so you know that it does takes a lot of effort because you have to kind of like shift your quilt every now and then but it is a slow process but it's very very um, satisfying indeed so I think it's um, something that you need to kind of put in mind in the first place that you do and will need to actually shift a lot but it is possible and, and definitely possible to quilt a large quilt under your domestic machine. So what I have here is just focusing on that one center bird. As I said before, I like to work vertically towards me. So that means I'm either pushing or pulling. I'm not moving to the right or left when I'm quilting because I find that's very easy. As you can see right here, what I'm doing is actually reducing the pressure of my foot because I forgot to do that earlier. I realized that some of the seams are quite thick. It limits my movement. So what I do is actually I have this on my machine. I just reduce the pressure of my foot and I'm just continuing away. So the spring releases a bit of the pressure and hence the, the foot is not actually giving a lot of pressure onto the quilt and it's easier to move that way, especially on thick seams. As you can see, I'm shifting as I'm actually moving because I like um, to be moving towards me. So I'm shifting as I'm doing the wing of this bird right here, I'm shifting it to the, a little bit, the quilt a bit to the left and so on. <clears throat> so I'm just going to continue and show you a little bit of this before I actually move on to the next one. Um, as you can see, I'm shifting it this way. And you, there's not much that you can shift because the whole focus is just on one little bit. You don't have to actually get all the place to be in the right you know, angle. You just need that little area to be in the right angle so that you can move easily. I'm completing this a little bit more. I'm just doing... A free motion kind of like feather looks on the wings of these birds and I'm going back to the center so with this kind of um, the design of medallion I'm just focusing on one block at a time I would say or one round at a time so this time I'm just focusing on the birds I'm going to complete all four of the birds and then move on to the next uh, part of the quilting before I actually move on for regular quilts I would recommend to do quarter by quarter that means if you're doing an all over all over quilting 
I recommend you to just finish one quarter before moving to the other quarter. So every time you finish a quarter, you come back to the center and continue. So you will have, you'll find about four times that you'll have the most difficult part, which is the center part. So as you can see, I'm shifting it around totally for the new bird. So this is where I find it a bit difficult for medallion quilt because you have to shift often. But if you're doing a large quilt and all over quilting, you only have to shift four times the most. So that means it's much, much easier. But because I'm custom quilting this and I decided I'm going to take some time and take it slow and just enjoy the process as I go. So I'm just going to take my time to kind of shift every time. So I'm just doing this in fast forward a little bit so that you don't get bored. I'm going to sprinkle some more tips so make sure you stay tuned um, as I go and, uh, you know, kind of give response to what I'm doing right here. now I'm actually working on the other bird and basically this will just be continuing the same process as I did the one before and then I'm going to continue with all the four birds. As you can see right here, now I've completed all the four birds. What I'm doing now is I am already dressed differently. That means I had a break. So every time I had a um, kind of completed a certain areas or when I feel like I need a break or the bobbin runs out, those are the signs that I need to break. You need a lot of breaks. Since you're actually shifting a lot and this is a large quilt, even though you're not shifting uh, big pieces but you're moving a lot, you do need a lot of break. It can be hard on your shoulder and sometimes we tense up and you need to kind of evaluate where, what makes you tense up and maybe the way you make the movement it tense you up because I tend to tense up if I'm moving to the right to the left so that I need to actually get everything um, so that my movement is more on up and down rather than to the left and to the right so I will try and shift my quilt so that it works that way. Now I'm actually snipping off the thread as I actually um, started a new place so basically the first four birds I finished off some th somewhere in the middle and I restarted again in the middle bringing the bobbin thread up so that I can actually si snip it off as I go so I, I really started a little bit and then I snip it off so that means at the end you won't have a lot of thread to actually snip off to tidy things up so that is a good idea especially if you're doing a large quilt so right now I'm actually doing the background of it so I'm just going to give you a close-up um, this is what I'm planning to do and this is what I did actually so I plan to um, have some more dynamics on the quilt and I just want to make sure that the bird itself kind of like flies out so it gives that a little bit of dynamic look to the quilt and I decided to go with some of the uh, wavy lines and basically kind of like echo that lines and then did some pebbles and I'm just going to continue to finish that area up. So I'm going to show you at the end how it looks like right now. I'm still working on it. I will post soon how it looks like in total. In the meantime, I would love to invite you to check out Free Motion Quilting Bootcamp where I share a lot more tips on how to free motion quilt using a domestic machine, teach you how to quilt different design in different modules and I break it down really step by step so that you don't get overwhelmed. The link for Free Motion Quilting Bootcamp is in the description box below so make sure you check that out. But I hope you've enjoyed that little tips from me. So, yep. If you have any questions, make sure you put a question down below and click the like button if you like this video and make sure you click subscribe. Bye-bye, I'll see you in the next video.